Hi future scientists, I am Atom. Join me in this adventure where we will travel through time to learn about the evolution of the atomic models. From the ancient ideas of Democritus to the quantum mechanical model. Let us explore the lives of these brilliant minds and the experiments that shaped our understanding of the atomic world. Greek model of the atom. Democritus was an ancient Greek philosopher who lived around 460 to 370 BCE. Legend has it that Democritus observed a cook cut a wheel of cheese into smaller pieces. As the cheese was repeatedly sliced, Democritus pondered the existence of tiny, uncuttable particles that form the basis of all matter. He coined the term atomos, meaning indivisible or uncuttable in Greek. The term atom finds its roots in this Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. Democritus's atomistic philosophy proposed that the variations in the arrangement and combination of these indivisible particles gave rise to the diversity of substances in the universe. Even though Democritus lived before Plato, Plato was 427 to 347 BC and Aristotle 384 to 322 BC, who were also Greek philosophers, they were contemporaries to some extent. Democritus' idea that matter is made up of indivisible particles became the basis for later atomic models, setting it apart from the teachings of Plato and Aristotle. Dalton's Atomic Model John Dalton, 1766 to 1844, was an English scientist who refined Democritus's ideas. Dalton's meticulous experiments with gases provided crucial evidence for his atomic theory, which he published in 1803. Dalton's atomic theory proposed that atoms are indivisible. Atoms of the same element are identical and that different elements consist of unique atoms each with a specific mass. One key aspect of Dalton's work was his exploration of the law of multiple proportions. The law of multiple proportions states that when two elements combine to form multiple compounds, the ratios of the masses of one element that combine with the fixed mass of the other are in simple whole number ratios. An example illustrating this law involves hydrogen and oxygen forming two different compounds, water H2O and hydrogen peroxide H2O2. In water, let us say two units of hydrogen combine with 16 units of oxygen. The ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in H2O then would be 2 to 16, which equals 1 to 8. In hydrogen peroxide, two units of hydrogen combine with 32 units of oxygen. So the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in H2O2 would be 2 to 32, which equals 1 to 16. Now let us compare the two ratios. The ratio of masses of oxygen in H2O and H2O2 will be equal to 8 to 16, which equals 1 to 2. Thus, the ratio of the masses of oxygen in these two compounds that combine with the fixed mass of hydrogen is a simple whole number ratio. The law of multiple proportions further supported the idea that elements combine in fixed small whole number ratios, providing a foundational principle for understanding chemical reactions. Thomson's Atomic Model the English physicist J.J. Thomson, 1856 to 1940, was the Cavendish Professor of Experimental Physics at the University of Cambridge from 1884 until 1919. In 1897, J.J. Thomson conducted his famous cathode ray tube experiment. The cathode ray tube is a glass tube that is evacuated, which contains two metal plates connected to a high voltage source. The cathode, which is the negatively charged plate, emits an invisible ray. This ray travels from the cathode to the anode, which is the positively charged plate. Then it goes through an aperture in the anode and eventually hits a fluorescent screen on the other end of the tube and produces a bright light. 
When an external electric field is applied across the tube, the ray is attracted towards the positive plate, indicating that the ray consists of negatively charged particles. This ray also deflected when an external magnetic field was applied across the tube, indicating that these rays were composed of charged particles. Thomson had discovered the electrons, challenging the notion that atoms were indivisible. Thomson received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1906 for his discovery of the electrons. He was knighted in 1908 and became Sir Joseph John Thomson. Since the atoms are electrically neutral, Thomson proposed his plum pudding model for the atom, where the pudding material is the positively charged part of the atom and the plums represent the negatively charged electrons. Comparing this to a chocolate chip muffin, the muffin dough represents the positively charged part of the atom and the chocolate chips represent the negatively charged electrons distributed in the dough. Rutherford's Atomic Model Ernest Rutherford, 1871-1937, to a New Zealand-born physicist, arrived at the University of Cambridge in 1895 to work under J.J. Thomson at the Cavendish Laboratory. Rutherford was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1908 for his groundbreaking work on radioactivity and his contributions to the study of the disintegration of elements. Rutherford conducted his famous gold foil experiment in 1911 with his colleagues Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden. The setup consisted of a radioactive source which emitted alpha particles, which are positively charged helium nuclei, a thin sheet of gold foil and a detecting screen. The gold foil was bombarded with alpha particles. According to Thomson's model, the positive charge is spread out, which means it creates a weak electric field. So the alpha particles should pass through with minimal deflection. However, most alpha particles went straight through. Some alpha particles were deflected at large angles, and a few even bounced back. This observation led Rutherford to conclude that the positive charge of an atom is concentrated in a small, dense nucleus at its center. His nuclear model of the atom portrayed atoms as mostly empty space with electrons orbiting the nucleus. Later, in 1919, Rutherford observed that when struck by an alpha particle, nitrogen, oxygen, and aluminum disintegrated, emitting positively charged hydrogen nuclei. So the positive charge of any nucleus could be explained by a whole number of these hydrogen nuclei. Rutherford had discovered the proton. Bohr's Atomic Model The Danish physicist Niels Bohr, 1885 to 1962, made significant contributions to atomic theory in the early 20th century. In his planetary model of the atom from 1913, Bohr proposed that electrons orbit the nucleus in fixed energy levels or orbits around the nucleus. An electron close to the nucleus has low energy and an electron further away from the nucleus has high energy. When electrons gain energy, they jump from low to high energy level. When electrons lose energy, they transition from high to low energy level, emitting energy in the form of light of different colors. In other words, when an electron transitions from a higher energy level to a lower one, it emits a photon of light with a specific energy. This energy corresponds to the difference in the energy between the two levels, and the wavelength of the emitted light determines the color of the spectral line, which is visible using a spectroscope. Bohr's model successfully explained the spectral lines of elements, especially in the hydrogen spectrum where transitions between energy levels produced distinct lines. Bohr received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922 for his study of the structure of the atoms, which explained the emission spectra. The Quantum Mechanical Model of the Atom 
This modern atomic model from 1926, heavily influenced by quantum mechanics, describes electrons not as particles with fixed paths around the nucleus, but as clouds of probability, a concept that arose from the work of Austrian physicist Erwin Schrodinger, 1887-1961, German physicist Werner Heisenberg, 1901-1976, and others. In this model, the nucleus is surrounded by an electron cloud, and the probability of finding an electron is high in the denser radius of the electron cloud and low in the less dense regions. This model created the idea of sub-energy levels. Discovery of the neutron. In 1932, James Chadwick, 1891-1974, an English physicist, conducted an experiment where beryllium atoms were bombarded with alpha particles, resulting in the generation of an unidentified radiation. Chadwick identified this radiation as consisting of particles with a neutral charge and a mass close to that of a proton. Thus, Chadwick discovered the neutron in 1932. Chadwick received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery of the neutron. Challenge questions. Question 1. What does the Greek word atomos mean? Atomos translates to indivisible and it is a root of the term atom. Question 2. How did Thomson discover electrons? J.G. Thomson discovered electrons through his cathode ray tube experiment where he observed the behavior of charged particles. Question 3. What was Rutherford's gold foil experiment and what did it reveal? Rutherford's gold foil experiment involved shooting alpha particles at gold foil. It revealed that atoms have a small, dense, positively charged nucleus at their center, and the rest of the atom is mostly empty space where the electrons can be found. Question 4. How did Bohr explain the hydrogen spectrum? Niels Bohr explained the hydrogen spectrum by proposing that electrons orbit the nucleus in fixed energy levels and transitions between these levels produce distinct spectral lines. Who contributed to the development of the quantum mechanical model? Schrodinger, Heisenberg and others contributed to the development of the quantum mechanical model, which is based on quantum mechanics, describing electrons as probability clouds rather than fixed particles. Question six, who discovered the neutron? Why was it discovered last? James Chadwick discovered the neutron in 1932. Neutrons carry no electric charge and so are not easily deflected by electric or magnetic fields, making their detection more challenging. Question 7. Show how carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide follow the law of multiple proportions. In carbon monoxide, 12 grams carbon combines with 16 grams of oxygen. In carbon dioxide, 12 grams carbon combines with 32 grams of oxygen. So the ratio of the masses of oxygen in the two compounds is equal to 16 to 32, which equals 1 to 2. Thus, the ratio of the masses of oxygen in these two compounds that combine with a fixed mass of carbon is a simple whole number ratio, and that is the law of multiple proportions. And there you have it, a whirlwind tour through the fascinating history of atomic models. I will see you in the next video where we will discuss the basic electron shell model of atoms. Please subscribe, like and share. Happy learning. Thank you.